Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story. I don't know where your rental is. I'm just enjoying my coffee. While my husband collects I don't work here lady incidents like a politician collecting bribes, I only have three of my own. This is one of them. This happened in the spring of 2018. My mother had traveled abroad to visit one of her relatives, so when she was flying back I went to get her. We live about three hours away from the airport. Because our eldest was recovering from a stomach bug, Puppy decided to stay home with the kids and I would get my mother and bring her home. My mother's flight was scheduled to arrive at 1.15 pm, but when I got there I found out they had a two hour delay and I had to wait. I thought alright, I'll enjoy a coffee while I wait. It notified my husband the weather was good, low 20 celsius with no clouds, and I decided to have my coffee on the outside patio of a coffee shop. I grabbed my tablet and because the airport is a bit windy, a yellow windbreaker. And apparently that was a problem. I was reading my book on my tablet, enjoying my coffee, wearing my yellow windbreaker when I heard the Hey you! I did not think it was directed at me and continued reading. Then I feel someone looming above me and I'm talking to you. I looked up to see a man looking down at me. The following exchange happened. Yes? Where is my rental? Thinking that he was asking where the rental companies had desks, I replied that they were on the other side of the arrivals area. Okay, be a good employee and bring it here. I will certainly not do that. I don't work for the rentals. Yes you are. Now go and get it. No. The thing goes back and forth like we are four year olds. When Karen inserts herself in the conversation. Honey, what takes so long? This employee here doesn't want to bring our rentals. Karen comes and grabs my windbreaker's label and puts her face uncomfortably close to mine. Listen, you little brat. Me and my husband are very good clients. I don't care if you're on your break, but if you don't bring the car in three minutes, we will get you fired. Me extremely pissed at that point, tell her. Listen, brat, take your paws off me or we will have a problem. Oh, you threaten me? Me? Oh, you're so getting fired. At that point, she swings her arm, hitting the coffee, spilling it on the table, missing the tablet, and on me. Me standing up, scramble off you witch, go find your own rental. Karen at that point slapped me, while her husband was screaming obscenities. I flipped and I slapped her back, which initiated a fight. When the initial argument began, a couple of bystanders had taken notice. The shouting had attracted a crowd, and when the fight started, somebody called the police. Two officers came and separated us. What's happened here? Chad tells him, This employee refused to help us and then attacked my wife. I don't work here, you idiot, and your wife attacked me. I want to press charges. Okay, okay, all of you are coming with me. We ended up at the airport police station. One officer went to get the manager of the rental company and the other reviewed the tapes with his boss. The rental company manager verified I wasn't an employee. They wear white shirts and black ties and a lanyard with their access ID. I was wearing a Cthulhu t-shirt and jeans. The cameras verified the attack and I decided to press charges and left to get my mother. Next story. Entitled mother tries to make my friend and I leave the seats we paid for. This took place in a mall movie theater a few years back. Here is a cast. Me, a teenage wheelchair user. My friend, also a teenage wheelchair user. My friend's nurse and the entitled mother. My friend and myself went to a movie and we bought tickets for two wheelchair seats. The only two wheelchair seats that didn't have a regular seat between them. The movie trailers had just started when this entitled mother stood in front of us and demanded that we move to another seat 
so she could bark her stroller. We refused, but she kept getting louder. She said that her seat was right behind us and she wanted to keep an eye on the stroller. The theater wasn't full, so I suggested that she move further down where there were open wheelchair spots. This really set her off. She told me that it's rude for a child to talk back to an adult. I told her that I was 17, but she did not believe me. She started yelling at us going about how kids like us already get whatever we want out of pity. How we don't know what it's like to spend all day walking around the mall with a little kid. The movie was PG-13 by the way, and how we shouldn't even be out by ourselves anyway. At this point, my friend's nurse came over and told her to stop harassing us. The nurse also pointed out that those spaces were reserved for wheelchairs, not strollers. This sent the entitled mother on another tangent, full of racial slurs and mocking the nurse for working for two white brats. The nurse is a black woman. The nurse calmly left the theater, and the entitled mother kept yelling at us. At one point, she tried to physically move my friend's manual wheelchair. And the only reason my friend didn't completely flip over is because a man a few rows back who saw what was happening and grabbed the back of my friend's chair as she was falling forward. The nurse came back in with the manager of the theater and the security guard, who had a brief confrontation with the entitled mother before removing her from the theater. The manager ended up giving the two of us each a free popcorn and drink as an apology. All that for a movie my dad had already spoiled for me. Next story. Jealous relative. This is something that has happened to me from about four years ago. A relative and I are both self-published authors in our community. Prior to these events, in middle school I had begun a story with it being well into 600 plus pages at the time. The computer I used back then was really old, a Windows desktop and tower that needed the 3.5 hard disk to save things to. It had been my aunt who used it for her college classes. It ended up crashing and I ended up losing everything I had been writing. Tossing the computer away, I subsequently lost interest in writing after that. I was around 12 to 14 at the time and buried the idea in my mental files for years just before these events take place. In comes a relative. We had got along well and were really close as kids. Though we had our petty childish fights, she was always trying to buzz the rest of us around. If she didn't get her way, then she would whine and cry, twist what we said around to play victim to the scoffs and arguments she started. Growing up together, she and I are the two eldest of seven grandchildren. We later found out that her first father, who passed away when I was six, had had an affair with a woman he originally intended to marry while being with relative's mother and she had got pregnant with relative's half-sibling we never got to meet. She, relative, was the outgoing type of person, and I, being the eldest of the seven kids, have somewhat been the shy, wallflower kind of person, the type that are easily forgotten and overlooked. I was gullible hanging on to my relatives every word. We shared similar hobbies, gaming, collecting trades cards, and so on. She and I also loved to draw and I at the time had started keeping a portfolio of my drawings, began taking art classes and writing poetry in my English courses in high school. She approached me at some point about drawing up some characters for a novel series she had wanted to do. Naturally, I was curious about it, seeing as we had often LARPed, live-action role-playing game, and acted out several of our book fantasies playing in a yard outside before us kids. She explains to me that she would pay me for the services, and at the time I had not been taking digital commissions. Back then, I only had free hand sketches for about $15 to $20. This did not sit well with her when I brought up payment and she dropped the subject. This happened on multiple occasions, and I ended up dismissing the whole thing after some time. I figured out after the multiple encounters with her that she never intended to pay me as Sid wanted my drawings and character art for free because we were family. This was a no-no, and I knew that just because we're family means nothing. I've since adopted something her purse father used to say. Family discount 
you get charged double. A few months pass by and she begins bragging to me that she's found and hired a book editor online and currently in the process of self-publishing her own books. I tell her that it's pretty cool and this moment sparks new inspiration in me to pick up my old writings from middle school. After this encounter, I spend the next few days poring over my online profiles to find some of the chapters of my original works having forgotten about posting them to see what others had thought. Finding them and now having an up-to-date computer system, I save what I could find to my laptop, rewriting the first several chapters to fit my current mindset from my teenage way of thinking back then. I end up with well over 130 pages of what ends up being the starting of my first book in a planned series. Over the years, I talk with my relative less and less as she puts out more novellas. The news of me writing my own books doesn't sit well with her. At this point, her attitude starts to change. Instead of being supportive, she decides to talk down to me, as if she's somehow superior because she had published a few books. I let it slide for the time being and bring up that. I had worked out a cover for my book as well. She asks to see it and scoffs in my face and loudly rolls her eyes while she's shopping at my workplace, of which I won't post of ramifications. She attempts to antagonize me further by stating that she used a cover site for her books, one that let you use free stock photos, most of which were poor quality and others of better styles were placed behind a paywall. I knew of the site and told her as much. She goes as far as to say that if I wanted a real book cover, I should use the site. I tell her right out that my cover was real and I had done it myself. I realized that we have been standing around talking for too long by then and we go our separate ways. I do not hear back from her for several more months until she starts handing our family copies of her latest book which was an amalgamation of short stories. To my expectation, only one story I ended up liking in a small 100-page booklet if you included the wasted title pages. She gives my sister, mother, aunt and myself all a copy and asks us when we had the time to go online and leave a review of what we really thought of the book. About a month or so passed and being busy with work, I set the book aside as I had honestly never cared much for my relative's writing style. In the past 95% of everything she had written was deliberately drawn out, or was obviously taken from something we had collectively watched or played in a movie or a game we had. Turns out that the situation was no different. And in my review I stated as much, asking that she be careful that a lot of the content was easily identifiable from certain big gaming corporations that make a huge chain of fantasy games. I was not alone in seeing this as other people commented on this note, having read her current books at the time. Seeing my post, she wasn't having any of it. Immediately, she started spewing that she would sue me for libel and threatening me with a lawyer for posting the review that she had asked for. I held nothing back, as I called her out for her inflated ego. Over the next few days, I waited to be served with a court date, but nothing came, and I thought it was over. I go about finishing up my own book, and on Christmas, I give my aunt a free copy as a gift. Found out later that this same relative had charged our aunt for two copies that she had not received yet. My book was literally three times the size of a relative's book for the same price. So in my book, my relative gets up with her family storms out of the party hosted by the said aunt. After this, my relative starts avoiding me. In my work, online, in public, and I'm completely fine with this until someone who knows my relative comes up to me at my job and shows me a website. Turns out that it was said by a relative's website promoting her online content. And lo and behold, across the top of the web page, in a small black banner was my name and demanding I stay away from her. This web page was completely open to the public and anyone could search the contents would see this. I am mad at this point. And then my phone dings with messages. Looking at it, I see that a person I don't know has forwarded me a series of screenshots of a long conversation between themselves and my relative. It is nearing my break for lunch, so 
I decided to wait and read them then. Going through each exchange between the two, I realized that my relative is talking about me and what had transpired on another platform for not loving her book and giving her a rave review that she feels she's entitled to. My relative calls me a stalker to this person who I shall not name and outright admits to giving out my personal information online in this same string of messages. The last post from this person to my relative told her that what she was doing was wrong, giving out people's personal information, and that calling someone a stalker for simply using the Yahoo email provider and not liking something they did was utterly childish. The commenter went on to say that they would be screenshotting the exchange and leaving a complaint with the side moderators. Since this has happened, I've found a complaint forum and posted this to hopefully stop my relatives caring like entitled antics and I'm happy to say that as of this post my relative site has been terminated and left to expire. Multiple people have come forward having been done the same way as myself by my relative for seemingly the same situation. I'm also happy to say that she no longer shops at my current workplace. The best part of all this is that all of the characters my relative asked me to draw her for free are sitting in my book series, protected by copyright law. I still have their original concept art in my portfolio, so she can no longer use them in any way. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.